Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the series Linear Algebra for Data Science. And in this tutorial, we are going to discuss a very important concept and topic in machine learning and deep learning, which is called norms. Now, norm is something that is used in machine learning to calculate the error of a particular model. So you can think of norm as uh, generally what is used to evaluate the error between let's say the output of a neural network and the actual values. So you can think of it as uh, a length, as a length of uh, a vector or you can say the magnitude of a vector. And there are different ways, different functions to calculate uh, uh, L2 norm, L1 norm, and there are different types. So we'll try to see what is the underlying mathematics, how do we calculate different sort of norms uh, of a vector, and then we're gonna see how machine learning and deep learning uh, builds on top of it, and how can we calculate these sort of norms in Python using the NumPy package. So without any further ado, Let's get started. So what exactly is norm in machine learning? Now, basically it is a function that maps a vector to a positive value. And we can use different functions uh, to calculate this length of vector. So in this particular tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss and discover different ways to calculate vector lengths or magnitudes called the vector norms. So norms are any functions that are basically characterized by these properties. So the first property is that norms are non-negative values as they are the length or you can say the magnitude of a vector which cannot be negative. Now, the second characteristic is that norms are zero if and only if the vector is a zero vector. Now, third property is that norms follow the triangle inequality. Now, what does the triangle inequality state? So, it states that the norm of the sum of some vectors is less than or equal to the sum of the norms of those individual vectors. So as can be seen in the equation below. So norm of A plus B where A and B are two vectors is less than or equal to norm of A plus norm of B. So this is represented by the diagram as well. So it follows the triangle inequality as well and we'll prove it in just a bit. The fourth property and the final property is that norm of a vector when multiplied by a scalar, it's equal to the absolute value of this scalar multiplied by the norm of the vector. So this is represented by this equation. So basically, if you if you calculate the norm of k multiplied by u, where k, are, k and u are two vectors, so that will be equal to the individual product of the norms of those individual vectors. All right, let's check out how the triangle inequality works. So here I have this uh, collaborative notebook. So let's create two vectors first. I have imported NumPy package, Seaborn and matplotlib, and let's create, let's create two vectors, A and B. So we can use NumPy array to create vectors as we saw in previous tutorials. So this can be, let's say three comma four, and then we have a B vector, which is let's say np dot array. Let's say this is uh, two comma five. Okay, so run this cell. Now our A and B vectors are ready. So the left hand side of the triangle inequality was that the norm of the sum of the two vectors. So we can calculate the norm using the linear algebra norm function. So the linear algebra module of the NumPy package gives us this method uh, called norm, uh, which we can use. So this is basically, as you can see in the description, it, uh, the function is able to return one of eight different matrix norms or one of an infinite number of vector norms. So here, what we're going to do is we are going to calculate the norm of A plus B. 
okay so this is the norm of the sum of the two vectors so it should be less than or equal to the sum of the individual norms so let's calculate the sum of the individual norms here this and then we have to calculate the norm of b so we have first calculated the norms of a and b and then I ha we have added them up so let's look at the result so you see that the norm of the individual vectors the individual norms the uh, sum of the individual norms is greater than the norm of the sum of the two vectors so that uh, basically proves our triangle inequality so geometrically this simply means that the shortest path between two points is a line now let's talk about what are the different ways to calculate these norms so there are different rules of calculating the p norms now why do we call these p norms because the recipe or you can say the step-by-step -step process to calculate the norms depend on the value of p so as you can see in this formula so in order to calculate or to get the norm of a vector we have this formula summation of absolute of xi raised to the power p and then the entire uh, thing is raised to the power 1 upon p basically we are trying to calculate the pth root so this value of p gives rise to different forms or different kinds of norms so the formula or the recipe would remain the same first step is to calculate the absolute value of each element that is uh, the absolute xi as you can see in the formula then the second step is to take the power p of these absolute values the third step is sum or you have to add all these values powered absolute values and then fourth step final step is to take the power one upon p of this result that we have got and we will get that particular p norm so let's talk about different values of these p so uh, one thing that we can do is we can add zero but zero again uh, all positive values will get you a one if you calculate its power zero except zero that will give you zero itself so that's not even a norm so we will start from one p equals one so this is called l1 norm vector l1 norm so here what we'll do is we'll simply replace the value of p with one so l1 norm basically it can be calculated uh, as the sum of the absolute values of the vector because p is one so if you will see if you will try to uh, break this formula down it will simply become sum of absolute values of the vectors so if we plot this on a 3d plot so this would uh, something this would uh, this would be the graph or the curve of our l1 norm the z axis uh, here represents the norm and x and y are basically two parameters so this is for simply uh, two dimensions but it would remain the same for all the other dimensions as well so as you can see this is more like planes that are joined together so let's replace it by two and talk about l2 norm so l2 norm if you'll replace p with two in the formula so you'll see that l2 norm can be calculated as the square root so 1 upon 2 the outside value uh, 1 upon p would become 1 upon 2 so that is the square root of the sum of the squared vector values so this is basically also known as the root mean square values this is the euclidean norm so there's another variation of l2 norm that we're going to discuss uh, in just a bit so what does the graph look like so here's the plot of l2 norm again z index is the norm and x and y are the two parameters so as you can see it's it's a lot uh, it's a little more uh, steep uh, and uh, we're going to compare it with the, the squared version of it as well so let's talk about uh, squared l2 norm so here we are calculating the square root but if we square it if we square this value so we get this another variation of l2 norm 
uh, here p value is 2 but we are actually uh, squaring the entire result so that's squared l2 norm now why do we do that so the squared L2 norm is basically convenient because it removes the square root and we end up with simple sum of every squared values of the vector. And the squared Euclidean norm is widely used in machine learning partly because it can be calculated with the vector operations as well. All you need to do is if you have two vectors, you can simply do uh, calculate the transpose and then multiply it with the vector. So x uh, transpose multiplied by x and you'll get the squared Euclidean norm. So there can be performance gain due to this optimization. So that's why it's, uh, it's a little more convenient to use this uh, in machine learning. Uh, one of the problem of this squared L2 norm is that it hardly uh, discriminates between uh, zero and uh, small values because the increase or the steepness of the function is very slow. As you can see in the blue region uh, at the bottom, it's a little more flat. That's why it's not able to discriminate well between zero and other smaller values. Now the last type of norm is called the max norm. Now here if what we're going to do is we simply replace the value of p uh, with the infinity so that basically becomes so it's denoted by L infinity so it's the L infinity norm the max norm and it corresponds to the absolute value of the greatest element of the vector and we'll, we're going to discuss this and see how we can uh, calculate all of these norms uh, with NumPy so let's take a look at that so let's see how we can calculate the L1 norm using the NumPy package Again, we are going to use the same linear algebra module. So let's quickly import from NumPy. We need to import the linear algebra module. And from this, we need to import basically the method norm. So we have done that. Now, next thing that we are going to do is, so for L1 norm, let's create a, a vector so let's say np dot array and we have a vector with a few elements let's say one two three now in order to calculate the l1 norm we'll have to provide the value of p so here we'll pass a which is our vector and then by default this value is two because of the l2 norm which is the default version and in order to pass p equals 1 you can simply do that in the norm method so let's if we run this now so this would simply give us the sum of the absolute values so 1 plus 2 plus 3 as we discussed uh, what l1 norm is simply uh, the addition of uh, the individual values so this is it 1 plus 2 plus 3 that's our l1 norm now if we want to calculate the l2 norm that is again very simple so simply pass norm pass a your vector to the norm method and this will give you your l2 norm now this is again uh, very easy uh, by default it is uh, two only so if you will pass two as well this would give you the same result great now if you want to calculate the squared l2 norm that is again very simple norm let's say we create another uh, vector x and let's say we pass uh, 2d array this time so let's say we have one then we have two then we have four we have five so this is our x now we discussed that uh, the squared L2 norm is very convenient and we can also calculate it using the transpose. So let's first uh, try to calculate what the value is using X transpose. So X dot T and we need to multiply it, uh, the dot product basically. So this will be simply dot dot and pass X. So this will be array is 46 again now if we want to calculate the norm using 
the method norm so here we'll pass x and what we need to do is this is squared l2 norm so we'll raise the power to 2 calculate the square so this again gives us the same result we have the same value of the squared l2 norm now the last type is the max norm so all you need to do is simply invoke the method norm pass your vector which is x and the value of p basically is infinity so uh, that would be numpy has infinity so we can use that so np.inf pass it and this will give you the max norm which is the maximum value the greatest value which was 5 in our case in the vector x so that's how you can calculate uh, all these values very easy it's being used in machine learning deep learning to calculate the magnitude of the vector to calculate errors so this is how l1 norm l2 norms are being used in our machine learning models and algorithms so that was all about norms we learned how to calculate l1 norm l2 norm max norms and we saw what's the underlying mathematics, what's the formula that actually generates and drives everything and based on simply uh, the value of p. We saw how we can use the NumPy package and how it would have been written in the uh, machine learning libraries as well. So again, if you found this video useful, don't forget to hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel uh, and uh, help the channel grow. I am trying my best to roll out more content. I have been very busy lately uh, in the past month, but yeah, uh, I'll try to roll out more content now. So. Yep, uh, I'll catch you in the next uh, one and till then uh, keep learning data science with Harshad.